Your learning target is I can add and subtract three digit numbers using place value. Your success criteria is I will know I am successful when I can solve real life addition and subtraction problems. What real life problems can be solved with addition and subtraction? Be thinking about that as you listen to the lesson and complete your assignment today. Here's a problem that I will solve. Pay close attention to how I solve the problem and decide what model is best and what operation am I going to add or subtract. Kim read, Kim has read 264 pages in her book. There are 412 pages. How many more pages does she need to read to finish the book? When I read this, I realize that I need to find out how many more pages she needs to read. Well, I know that she only needs to read part of the book because she's already read part. She's already read 264 pages, so this must be a part. I also know there are 412 pages in the book. That's how many pages there are in all. So that's the total. So to find the answer, I need to find a part. I need to find the other part that she has to read. So the best model that helps me visualize this is the math mountain. If she's got 264, that's only part. I don't know the other part, but I know the total. And I know that when I'm missing a part and I have the total and a part, I can subtract. So I'm going to line up my place values and subtract. I'm going to subtract the ones. 2 minus 4. I can't do it. Go to the tens place. Take a 10. That will give me 12 ones. 10 ones plus two ones that I had makes 12. 12 minus 4 is 8. Now I have to subtract my tens place, but 0 minus 6 is impossible for the in this equation, so I'm going to have to go next door, take 100, that will give me 10 tens. And since I don't have tens to add it to, I didn't have any here, I'm going to add 10 or subtract 10 minus 6 is 4. And now all that's left is my hundreds place. I have three one hundreds minus two is one. Kim has 148 pages left to read. And of course, I need to check to see if my answer is reasonable. 148 is reasonable. If Kim has read part of them, 148 is less than the total. So I know that that's a reasonable answer. If this answer were greater than 412, I would know I had done something wrong because it is impossible to have more pages left to read than are in the book in the first place. Now as a mathematician, I want to check to make sure my work is precise. I know this isn't a reasonable answer, but I want to make sure that my subtraction is correct. So I'm going to put the parts back together, the part she's read and the part she still needs to read. And that should give me the total book. That should give me the total. 4 plus 8 is 12. I lined up my place values. That's 12. That gives me a new 10. 6 plus 4 is 10 plus 1 more makes 11. Now I'm going to make a new 10, 100. 2 plus 1 plus 1 is 4. Yep, that my subtraction was correct because I got back to the total. I put the parts together to get to the total. Here's a problem for you to solve. Pause the video. Think carefully about what the problem's asking, what you already know, and what model will best help you figure out the operation you need to use, whether you add or subtract. Pause the video now. All right, how did you do? Let me read the problem and think aloud as I figure out which model I would use. See if you did the same thing. Sarah has 462 stickers. Jim has 234 more stickers than Sarah. How many stickers does Jim have? Well, when I read this problem, I see it's asking me, I need to figure out how many stickers Jim has. But I also notice something really important. This problem has a more than. This than is a really good clue that I'm comparing two people or two things. And therefore, I know I need a comparison model. Now I need to say, who am I comparing? Well, I'm comparing Sarah, Sarah's stickers to Jim or Jim's stickers. So now I can put those down, but I don't know who has more. I need to go back and really look at the problem. Let me think. Hmm. Jim has 234 more stickers than Sarah. 
be careful, this does not say Jim has 234 stickers. It says he's got more stickers than Sarah. So Jim's going to have the big bar. And I know I don't know Jim because the problem is asking me to figure out Jim. I do know Sarah, so I'm going to put that in there. And I do know that the more than or less than, if if Sarah had 234 more stickers, she would have as many as Jim. But right now, she's got 462. And I need to figure out how many Jim has. And he's got 234 more than Sarah. So to find the answer to Jim, I know his is more. He has more stickers, so I'm definitely going to have to add. I'm missing the big bar. So I'm going to add 462 plus 234. And of course, I'm going to add the ones first. 2 plus 4 is 6, 6 plus 3 is 9, and 4 plus 2 is 6. No regrouping. That was easy. But I still want to be a mathematician and attend to precision. I'm going to see if my, subtract, my addition is correct by subtracting using the opposite. I'm going to take the total and subtract either part. I just find it easier to subtract this one. And if I take away a part, the total minus a part, I should end up with the other part. So, 696 minus 234. 6 minus 4 is 2. 9 minus 3 is 6. And 6 minus 2 is 4. And yep, I got back to what Sarah had. Jim minus the 234 more he has than Sarah must be Sarah's, 462. Your goal today your success criteria today was to solve real life addition and subtraction problems. Right now, if you still need more help, you can go to Google Classroom and watch the tutorial video. If not, jump right over to Seesaw, go into Seesaw, open the practice pages and solve them. Please check your work and please draw models. The models may be drawn on a separate paper if it's easier. Then when you're done, hit submit and go to iknowit.com and complete one assignment. Have fun.